Hi, this is Dr. Dave, and in this video I want to show you how to put together an amortization table for a loan. What you see in front of you is what we're going to be creating in this video, and let's make sure we understand exactly what's here. So this is going to be a loan for $180,000 at a rate of 3.5% annually, and we're going to be making payments every month for 30 years, so that's a total of 360 periods. The payments are going to be $808 and 20 something cents, and I'm gonna to have to decide whether I want to round up or round down. In this case, I've decided to round up. So that makes my payments 808.29. So when I look at the amortization table, what I see here in column B is what all of my payments are. For each one of those payments, I'm charged a certain amount of interest, and that's what's in column C. Anything else that's in the payment goes to paying off the principal, and so when you see that 283.29 here, what I owe is reduced by that amount to give the amount that you see down here below. That's the principal I owe at the end of that period. So this goes on for an entire 360 periods until I get to my very last payment, which because uh, of the way I've done my rounding isn't as much as I've had in the earlier payments. And so I'll have to adjust that. All right, so let's go over, let's take a look at what the sheet looks like when we start. So here I have my blank sheet and I'm going to need to go in and uh, give it the information for the loan. The rate is 3.5%. The amount of the loan is $180,000. And the number of periods is 360. To calculate the payment, I'm going to go ahead and use the PMT function that's in sheets. So equals PMT parentheses. And now it's going to prompt me here in this little box to tell me exactly what needs to go in. So first of all is the rate, and this is the rate per period. So I'm going to click up here on my 3.5% and say divide by 12, comma. Now I need the number of periods, so I'll click on the 360, comma. Now I need the present value, that's the amount of the loan, so that's 180000 finish it off with the parentheses, and hit enter. You'll notice when I do that, that it goes ahead and says $808.28 and some fraction there, but it has it as a negative. And for my purposes, I'm going to want this to be a positive, and the easy way to change that is to go up here and for the amount of the loan, which was in H2, right there, just put a minus there. And as soon as you do that, that will go ahead and change this to a positive number. So I'm going to go ahead, and for no particular reason, I'm going to round this up. So when I put the payment in here, I'm going to have to use a special function. But before I do that, let's go ahead and start putting in some of the information in the table. So I'm going to start out and say payment zero and the principal at the end of that period is going to be my 180,000. So I'm going to say equals, and that is in H2, and I'm going to use a cash sign H, cash sign 2. And what that does is that's always going to use that value in that particular cell. There's When I fill things, that's not going to be stretched out. It's always going to refer back to that cell. Now in payment one, the payment that I'm going to use is going to be this value, but rounded up. So to round it up, I'm going to use a special uh, function called roundup. So I'll type equals R-O-U-N-D-U-P parentheses. And it says, okay, what's the value? Well, that's the value here in H4. So I'm going to say cash sign H, cash sign 4, 
comma, and I'm going to do it to two places. And the reason for that is when someone makes a payment, they're making it in dollars and cents. They can't deal with these lower uh, fractional amounts. So I'll hit enter. And so what it's done is it's rounded up the 808.28044 and probably a whole lot of other decimals to $808.29. All right, so now here's the key part. In the interest for the period, we need to figure out how much interest is included in this payment. So to do that, I'm going to type equals, because this is going to be a calculation. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the 3.5. But of course, I'm going to be filling this a little bit later. And I need it always to be fixed there. So I'm going to use the cash signs in here in front of the H and in front of the 1. So I'm going to multiply that interest rate divided by 12 times the outstanding principal, 180. Hit enter, and it gives me $525 of that particular payment is interest. Everything else should go to principal. So in D3, I'm going to say equals, I'm going to do B3 minus C3. And so that means that the remaining part of the payment, the 283.29, goes to paying off the principal right here. So when I do that, so in E3, I'm going to say equals. I'm going to click on the 180,000 in E2 minus the 283.29. Enter. And so what happens now is I'm going to go ahead and say at the end of this period, I owe $179,716.71. Now, by the way, if these things are not formatted with two decimals, you can always go up and increase the number of decimal places with that button or decrease the number of decimal places as needed. So that is the first row here of the payments. Now, let's see. We're going to go down one more to two. And we're going to use that same $808.29. And the easy way to get that in there is to click on it. Drag it down to fill it. We're going to calculate interest the same way we did before. But now we're going to be calculating interest not on the $180,000, but on the reduced principal. If I pull this down and then click in it, you can see that it's taking the interest rate divided by 12 times E3, and that's the interest that goes in there. So that's exactly what I wanted. All right, let's drag this one down. It says it's the difference between the payment and the interest in that, and we'll do the same thing here. Click inside there, and yep, it's the difference between the outstanding principal at the beginning of the period take off the portion to principal, that's what gives me the in principal at the end of the period. Now I've got 360 payments that I'm doing this for. I don't, poss I don't want to put this in for every single one of them. So now let's use a fill to put in a whole bunch of payments. So I'm going to click in A3, highlight the two rows I've been working with, grab the fill bar, and I'm going to drag that all the way down to 362. Takes a little while to do that because that's a lot of rows. And it's really easy to do too many, but I'm just holding down on the mouse as I drag. And as I start to get closer, I can always come back and check to make sure I'm in the right place. All right, we're getting pretty close here. All right, so there's 362. It's filling everything. So when I get to the very last payment, if I make it $808.29, look what happens. I've paid too much money. I want the balance at the very end of this to be zero. So what that means is I need to be a little bit more careful in that very last payment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these cells. I'm going to hit the delete key and take them out. 
and I'm going to do the very last payment manually. So in order to pay this thing off, I need to make sure that my principal for the last one here is that value right here. So here I'm going to type equals, click on that, enter. So I know that when I go ahead and work out the amount that's left at the end of this period, it's going to be zero. When I come over here, I'm going to go ahead and figure out exactly uh, how much interest on that $799.88. So equals cash sign H, cash sign 1. Remember, that's where my interest was. Divided by 12 times the principal that's outstanding. So in that last payment, $799.88 has to go to the principal to pay off the loan. The interest will be $2.33. So if I add those two together, that means the last payment's gonna be 802.21. And if I do that, so equals, the principal at the beginning of the period minus what's going towards the principal, I'll end up with zero remaining on the loan. So now I have my entire amortization table in here. I can scroll all the way through this to see what's happening in any one of the payments, and I'm done with the amortization table. Remember, this is an example of using round up. You could also do round down, and that would be R-O-U-N-D, DWN, and then you put in the value in the number of decimal places.